Let's face it, the national election is less than six months away and you're still having trouble understanding who the hell is running and what's worse, how many political parties are involved in the process. Unlike in the US where they have a two-party system, in Argentina you have a million party system. So no one will blame you if by the time you get to the polling station, you have no idea what the Frente Despertar is or why it looks suspiciously similar to the Obama 08 campaign logo. This is why today we decided to explain Argentina's major political parties and who's competing against who in the primaries using as reference something everyone will understand, Game of Thrones. And by that, I mean the show, not the novels, because let's face it, none of you have read the novels, none of you ever will. For more on this, it's time for another episode of WTF, Race to the Iron Throne. I gotta be honest with you, if you don't watch Game of Thrones, you're kind of screwed with today's episode. I had this whole speech planned out where I was gonna say, no, it's fine, you will understand anyway, but no, you won't. Kind of dropped the ball on that one, sorry. This is not the first time Argentina's complicated and backstabbing politics inspires this sort of comparison. In fact, someone a few years ago went as far as to recreate the show's iconic introduction using Buenos Aires landmarks. Look, we don't have a lot of time, so we obviously won't be able to cover every single party looking to win the race for the Rivadavia seat, but we can still focus on the ones with the most popular candidates. And while I'm sure that many of you are hoping I will compare Macri to the Night King because of his terrifying blue eyes, or Christina Kirchner to Cersei because you think they're both ice queens, this time we've decided to play nice and compare both of them to the good guys. If you don't like it, you can complain below. I won't be reading anyway. So let's begin with Cambiemos, or as I call it, Winterfell. A mess of a place combining a lot of people from different places who have come together to fight a common enemy. Now you probably think that Cambiemos is President Macri's political party, but it's not. Actually, Cambiemos is a big coalition between three major parties, the Pro, the Radicals, and the Civic Coalition Cadi. The three of them joined forces in the 2015 election in an effort to defeat the Kirchnerista candidate Daniel Scioli. Back then, Mauricio Macri from the Pro party won the primaries against Ernesto Sanz from the Radicals and Elisa Carrillo from the Civic Coalition Cadi and emerged as the leader of Cambiemos and has remained there ever since. Cambiemos also has its own area star, Lelita Carrillo, a maverick crusader who will let no one stand in the way of justice, even if it means going against her own people. Also, she likes to troll her enemies by posting weird photos of her on Twitter. As long as Macri has the support of Arya Stark, it looks like Cambiemos remains strong since she seems to be the glue keeping it together. But we'll see what happens in the primaries as President Macri's popularity is in the mid 30s right now. Then you have the Partido Justicialista, which is the official name of the Peronist party and that I choose to call the House Targaryen, even though they are an indescribable mess. Now, why the Targaryens, you ask? Well, first of all, Christina Kirchner herself said on Twitter that she loved the Mother of Dragons back in 2013. She also predicted she would end up, you know, hooking up with Jon Snow or Rob Stark. And we know that at least 50% of that prediction is now accurate. Also, a couple of years ago, during a raid in a money laundering case, the police found that a former Scioli campaign official was hiding a safe inside the sculpture of a dragon. Coincidence? I don't think so. Considering that the polls are showing that Christina has very strong chances of coming back, she is without a doubt the Daenerys Targaryen of Argentine politics, and even Twitter agrees, as shown by this pretty accurate comparison someone tweeted recently. We still don't know if she's running, but the rest of the Targaryens looking to compete against her in the primaries are definitely facing an uphill battle, especially since they're all confusing as f Take these two, for example. Agustin Rossi's campaign slogan seems to be, there's another way, while Daniel Scioli's own campaign slogan seems to be, the other way. Is Rossi saying people should vote for Scioli? I don't know. Confused? Welcome to Peronism. Side note, a few years ago, Amelia Clark was told Christina Kirchner was a fan and her advice in return was to kill all men. Then you have Roberto Lavagna's party, Consenso 19, or as I call it, the Wildlings. Lavagna has been away from the action for a long, long time and no one else is sure of where his loyalty stands, so they tread carefully around him. Cambiemos wants him to fight a common enemy, but he's already said no, so for now, it looks like he's going solo. And who could forget about the dissident Peronistas called Alternativa Federal, which includes Juan Manuel Ortubey, Sergio Massa, and Miguel Angel Fichetto. AF is pretty much the House Baratheon of this year's election. You know who they are, you know where they are, and you know what they want. But at the same time, you also know if House Targaryen is involved, there's just no chance they're going anywhere, so everyone's like, eh, 
Side note, careful when expressing your support for them since writing Sergio Massa AF on Twitter may actually send the wrong message. Last but not least, you have the White Walkers, those candidates who are expected to get so little votes politically, they're already dead. Jose Luis Espert from the Espartar, Nicolás del Caño from the Frente de Izquierda, Juan Antonio Ferri from the PAN, a party that was considered extinct in 1931, and somehow it's back, I'm not kidding, Google it. And finally, ultra-far-right candidate Alejandro Biondini from the Bandera Vecinal party, a Nazi sympathizer, and when I say a Nazi sympathizer, I mean an actual Nazi. There's your Night King, ladies and gentlemen. Aria, you know what to do. Bottom line is, it's still too early to know what's going to happen. We're still a month and a half away from June 22nd, the deadline for candidates to jump in the race. Then you have the primaries on August 11, where every major political party selects their presidential candidate and, of course, the big finale on October 27. So anything is possible. I wouldn't be surprised if I wake up one morning and suddenly the Night King is president. Until then, good luck trying to get this song out of your head. Guys, let, let's play a game of who said this, okay? It's Carrió or Arya Stark, okay? You need, to, you need to guess, all right? So, number one, she's sick. You have to leave her alone. I can't beat up someone who's sick. Who said that, Carrió or Arya Stark? Arya Stark. Wrong, it was Carrió talking about Christina. Next, he's just like her. The only difference is he's just missing an arm. Carrió or Arya Stark? Arya Stark talking about Jim Lannister. Wrong, it was Carrió comparing Daniel Scioli to Christina Kushner. Next. What's the little guy's name? Aria talking about Tyrion Lannister? Wrong again. It was Carrillo talking about production minister Dante Sica. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I can go all day. Oh. Part, right? I should have said, like, I can go on all day.